On the Road, Part 1. This was recorded by Father Paul Skljavinj in Riga, Latvia. Montage, Ekaterina Bulicheva, Valdis Zelonka. Music performed by Trio Sarema, Art, Janis Kalninj. A film by Janis Logins. The author thanks all whose written or visual material was used for the film. This film is not commercially distributed. The author grants rights to copy to anyone whom it may concern. Notre Dame de Victoire in Paris, the favorite church of the family Zeli and Louis Martin. Many holy masses were celebrated here for the intention of Therese and her family. I put my prayer on the wings of an angel and ask him to lift it to the heavenly gardens for the child Jesus and little Therese to turn this prayer into wonderful rose. And this wonderful rain, let it pour down to the earth, let it pour down. Going to Lisieux for the first time, we were uncertain how to find the Basilica of Saint Therese, though as you see, it is impossible not to spot it. Lisieux, it is October 18, 2008. Pious preparations for the tomorrow's beatification festivities are on the way at the Basilica of Saint Teresa of Lisieux. In the meantime, we hit the road to Alençon, the cradle of the Martin family. There is a festivity there tonight. On the road to Alençon, St. Teresa's native town. A small transit junction in Normandy. Normandy covers only 5% of the territory of France, but this small region has given to France and the world 
two heavenly guardians. On May 30, 1431, Jeanne d'Arc received her sanctity through martyrdom at stake in Rouen. Five hundred years later, there was Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face. It takes approximately an hour and a half to go from Paris either to Rouen or to Lisieux. The distance from Lisieux to Alençon is about 100 kilometers. We make it in a couple of hours, change of trains included. Let your heart be not afraid. God loves you. He will save you. Let your heart be not afraid. Confide in God. Alençon. This is where Teresa's father Louis Martin and mother Zélie Gourin met, got married, and lived. The festivity tonight is an homage to them. Alençon is situated 170 kilometers from Paris. In Teresa's day, some. Sixteen thousand inhabitants live there. This is the land of the untroubled childhood of Therese and her sisters, Mary, Pauline, Leonine, and Celine. Today, some twenty-six thousand people live in this relatively small French town. Louis and Zélie. Spent there 19 years, from 1858 till autumn 1877, when Zeli passed away. There is a museum in Louis and Zélie's family house. Close by is this nice chapel. It would be good to remember the favorite saying of Teresa's father, Louis Martin: "Beautiful as a chapel." Sleigh, 
eyes. Don't forget me, God. I will obey your voice. My God, I love your cross. My God, I live but for you. Like a bird who seeks shelter, so the man seeks the kingdom of God. To live in your grace is my joy. Up to you I rise my heart's prayers. Louis and Zélie Martin beatification festivities in Allen's cradle of their family. October 18, 2008, Rue Saint Therese. We can say with certainty that it was a feast day for the whole town. Especially in this cathedral, where Louis and Zélie got buried, where they were present at the Holy Mass every morning. This is little Teresa's baptismal bowl. And this is her baptismal dress. Parents hastened to baptize her on the next day after birth to avoid child's eventual expiring unbaptized. Such long white baptismal dresses are traditional in France. Honoring Louis and Zélie Martin, who will be proclaimed blessed tomorrow, the bishop welcomes representative of the Holy Father. Cardinal Martins, other cardinals and bishops, all the clergy, representatives of the secular authorities, delegation from Lisieux, 
all who helped to arrange this event. Louis and Zélie Martin and their children lived in this town. Here they got married 150 years ago. They attended this church. All the family prayed here. Every morning they attended the Holy Mass here. Tonight, we can entrust our families, all our beloved ones, to them. Please ensure your protection to us, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of God be with you and with your spirit. It is my pleasure to be together with you on the eve of beatification of Louis and Zélie Martin. I ask you to embrace this thanksgiving mood for all the gifts received from the Lord, especially the gift of the family. The family as a live habitat, as a palace where faith is awakened, the family which often is hurt in its unity and its vocation to love. Let us pray for God's mercy. Let us confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in on what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Tobias and Sarah, the Old Testament saints, holy guardians, that was how Louis Martin and Zélie Gourin saw themselves on the marriage medallion. The lovers' bridge in Alençon, here they met for the first time. The sixth nun on the photograph is their cousin, Marie Gourin. History of Alesson as a settlement goes back to the fourth century, Anno Domini. Researchers have traced Louis and Zeli family tree down to quite ancient times. Several peculiar ancestors seemed worth mentioning. One of Zeli's uncles was a priest during the French Revolution. He was seized when he carried Holy Communion and slaughtered. He spilled his blood and it got mixed with the Christ's most precious blood. Louis' father was a captain in Napoleon's army. 
At the end of a hard day, he nailed down in his tent and prayed to God. His comrades in arms wondered, What are you doing? The captain's usual answer was, I pray because I believe, because I have faith. Martin's Family House in Alençon Louis Martin's Watchmaker and Jeweler's Workshop This is the entrance to the workshop. While speaking about the Martins, we have to admit that God donated to his people this, the second holy family, for a limited period of time. In 1959, when Martin's daughter, Selene, a nun, died, ceased also their family tree. Like the sun, who equally shines on the cedars and on the tiniest flower, as if it were the sole one on the earth, so our Lord caresses every soul as if it were the sole one.
Teresa's childhood, the idyllic family life of her sisters and their gray, whiskered father collapsed like that of Giuseppe Verdi, creator of Nabucco. Pilgrimage to Lourdes did not bring the grace of healing. Quite contrary, it just enfeebled the already illness-stricken Zeli. She could not even open the church doors. My mom lay motionless. I had never seen a coffin before, but I understood. Child's life changed completely. Teresa was not yet five. Let us reconsider Zeli's life once more. In Alençon, she wanted to take the monastic orders and to care for the sick and the poor. Lord's plans for here were different. She became a mother of many and raised her daughters for heaven. Within 13 years, she carried and gave birth to nine children. Four of them died as infants. Joseph Louis, Joseph Jean Baptiste, and Melanie Therese lived only for a couple of months. Helene's death overwhelmed Zeli with extreme grief. The five years old asked her mother to keep calm. And expired after five minutes. It happened that it was a payday when one of her infants died. Zeli overcame herself and went on to pay wages to her laborers. Such was her sense of duty. Zeli used to write to her daughters while at the boarding school. What a marvelously prophetic sentence, written on November 1st, 1873. All Saints' Day, when Therese was already born. Dear daughters, you must faithfully serve our good Lord so that someday you may find yourselves among the saints whose feast we celebrate today. Half of the Martins' family is already among the officially recognized saints. A friend of mine, whose wife died approximately at Zeli's age, said to me, I feel as if somebody has cut off and away a whole half of mine. So must have felt Louis Martin.
After Zeli's death, Louis and his daughters, hoping to lessen the pain, moved to Lisieux, where Zeli's relatives lived. This is their house, Boussonet. There the five sisters, five nuns, grew up. In Teresa's day, some 15,000 citizens lived in Lisieux, twice as much today. The distance from Alençon to Lisieux is 100 kilometers. Lisieux is situated some 50 kilometers from La Manche, English Channel. La Manche. Caen at La Manche is connected with Teresa's sister Leonie's nunship at the Visitation Monastery. And with Louis Martin being hospitalized at the asylum. Also, Teresa's beautiful reminiscences about the endless sea come from here. The last years of life, Louis Martin spent at the Cayenne's psychiatric hospital one among 1,700 mental patients, quite a number. Louis rejected the offered private ward. He wanted to be with others, like in his Alençon days, when he and Zeli attended the Holy Mass together with the workmen at six o'clock in the morning. The nuns who were in charge of the Cayenne's asylum used to tell that Monsieur Martin was not an ordinary patient. During his stay there, they got insight into some profound secret of the cross. In his conscious moments, Louis used to say, It serves me all right. All my life I was used to determine the order of things. Now I have to be humiliated, so that my vain glory is extinguished. The nuns felt distraught, seeing the venerable patriarch in such a condition. But his daughters have presented evidence that once, when returning from Alençon, their father, thrilled by the Holy Spirit, had told them that he had asked God for a trial, for the cross, and now he had it. But in Lisieux, where everybody was an acquaintance to everybody else, people spread rumor, as it always happened in the world, that the daughters were pitiless. In particular, Therese, the youngest, got blemished for entering the monastery and thus making her father insane. Therese was 15, when she entered Lisieux Carmel in 1888. Dressed in bride's white attire, she knelt in front of her patriarch and begged for blessing. Louis also knelt in front of his young daughter and marked her forehead with a cross sign. This happened not so long ago. Teresa's welcome into the Carmel was celebrated in the chapel of Lisieux Carmel. Story goes that the bishop, when seeing the young postulant overwhelmed by the Holy Ghost and her devout parent, got confused and started to chant Te Deum. The day's festivities somehow reminded of Palm Sunday and the passion coming soon. Soon Therese got to know that when her father's condition 
in the asylum became more aggravated, he used to close his face with cloth. She felt the similarity with the holy face of Jesus. and changed her name to Teresa of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face. She fully accepted her father's intention to donate family savings to the construction of a new author. One night, holding her father's hand and gazing into the starry sky, Teresa exclaimed, Look, Daddy, my name is written into the sky. Among constellations, we can discern the letter T, but we can also see a cross.
And now here, in the Basilica of St. Therese of Lisieux, the Catholic Church who raised to the altar honor the family, Pater Familias Louis and Mother Zeli. Father, head of the family, Louis Martin. Mother Zeli Martin. The oldest daughter, Mary, lived in this world 80 years. Pauline, 90 years. Leonie, 78 years. Her beatification process started in June 2015. Celine lived 90 years, but the most beloved, famous sister Therese, Therese of the Child Jesus, Therese of Lisieux, had only 24 years to live under the sun, last to be born, first to reborn for the heaven. said that Therese could laugh from dawn till night. Jesus has said, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. On behalf of the Holy Father, Cardinal Martins pronounces Louis and Zelie Martin beatified.
True meeting of the children of God from Latvia and Madagascar. The Lisieux Carmel Chapel. This is Therese. From the very childhood, we know about the sleeping beauty who lies on the glass mountain. For a hundred years, God's people come here to seek the divine childhood. Therese's sisters, daughters of Carmel, are here about. They became what they dreamed about. Pope Francis has said, time is not a clockwork, time is hope. Let us fill the time of our life with good deeds. From Lisieux Carmel, passing the house of Jean d'Arc, as is said on the memorial plaque. Teresa loved Jean. In theatrical performances, she performed the part of this military leader, heroic daughter of France. Down along the street, it is a kilometer or so till the house of the Martin family. Here everything looks like a hundred years ago. Look, this is the well-known statue of Mother of God, which smiled at Therese at Pentecost. This is the house where the daughters matured for the monastic life. Yeah. 
Our train from Lisieux to Paris had to arrive precisely when the fireworks started. But then it was announced, without any further commentary, that the train would be delayed. At that moment, the fireworks in honor of Louis and Zélie started. My heart said that it was Therese who held back the train so that we, from that platform, would be able to show also to our nation the celebration in honor of her parents. On March 26, 1923, after the official formalities were settled, the body of little Therese was exhumated from the cemetery in Lisieux. When the grave was opened, everybody felt the fragrance of roses and sweet violets. Afterwards, in a casket mounted on a white horse, Therese made her first procession to her beloved Carmel. On the road, they stopped at the Benedictine Abbey, where she had spent her school days. Benedictine sisters had prepared Therese for her first communion. Look, this is Therese's first communion dress. The procession moved along the main Cayenne and Alençon streets and went on to the Carmel. The town was overcrowded. Some 50,000 people had arrived. Lots of carriages. Police reported that the crowd was disciplined. There was a delegation from the United States French honorary escort, some 400 priests. Six men carried Therese into the Carmel. Awaiting the beloved daughter, the chapel had been renovated. Brazil donated the wonderful gold casket After being committed to the earth for 25 years, Therese rose to travel the world. A month later, she was proclaimed blessed in Rome. Two more years and she was canonized.
Carmel celebrates also in Latvia. Solemn perpetual vows made by a nun. She readily puts her whole life into the hands of Christ. The first enclosed Carmel monastery in Latvia, in Ixchile, near Riga, on the banks of the Daugava River. It was nearby there where the Apostle of Latvia, Saint Maynard, started to Christianize the heathen indigenous tribes. It was at the end of the 12th century. The Riga Catholic Seminary is consecrated to the honor of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. In almost every Latvian church, you can find either an image of Therese or even a special chapel devoted to Therese. There you can pay tribute to the saint or pray for her guardianship.
In summer 2007, the reliquary of St. Therese traveled through Latvian churches. Many rural churches were crowded with people who waited for the arrival of the reliquary till one, three, or even five o'clock early morning. It shows the love people have towards Therese. It shows what place Therese, a marvelous mediator, has in people's hearts. Homage to St. Therese in Latvia was introduced by Bishop Sloskans in 1930s after he was released from the Soviet Gulag. Next time, we will welcome St. Teresa's holy parents. The shortest of winter months has muffled the chapel. Therese, saintly dormant, lies on her glass mountain. But her soul in heaven prays for the sisters down here in Carmel and for all of us in this colorful world. We would like to return to a crucially important event in Teresa's life, her pilgrimage to the Pope. In November 1887, a group of pilgrims left Lisieux for Rome. Among the pilgrims were Louis with Therese and Sally. When in Paris, the family always prayed in Notre Dame de Victoire, now a basilica. Therese asked her father for a special grace on Pentecost, 1887. She asked his permission to enter the Carmel at the age of 15. Louis said nothing. It seemed that complete self-sacrifice had fulfilled him for some sort of peaceful joy. He exclaimed that God has showed him great honor by taking away his daughters. Louise's deepest emotional experience was Mary's entering the convent. He had hoped that she would always stay with him, 
and help with housekeeping. Pauline, like Zelly, bore monastic spirituality deep in her heart and was the first to enter the convent at the age of 20. Later she was a prioress and it was thanks to her that the world got acquainted with Teresa's The Story of a Soul. Mary entered the Carmel in 1886. She was 26 then. Louis was presented to the Holy Father, Leo XIII, as the father of two Carmelite sisters. But next to him there were two more. Therese, little Therese, after her request for permission to join the Carmel, he literally became motionless, accepted his martyrdom, and it was his divinization. It was a long way to go. Therese saw quite a lot, and not always the best things, during her secular life. Celine joined the Carmel in 1894, after the death of her father. Leonie left the secular world as the last one. She took her solemn perpetual vows in 1900 at the Visitation Monastery in Cayenne. The House of Holy Family in Loreto, we liked its modesty. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, in her Life of Jesus Christ, tells how seven angels carried this small house through the air over the seas from Nazareth to Loreto. This was Teresa's longest and most important pilgrimage in her short earthly life. Together with Celine and their royal terror. How urgently they desired to imitate Saint Virgin Cecilia. Saint Virgin Agnes. All the holy Roman martyrs. Beholding Pope Leo XIII, Teresa's heart throbbed. Celine encouraged her, Speak out! When it was Teresa's turn to approach the Pope, she knelt before the Holy Father, grabbed his cloak, and asked, Let me enter the Carmel. If this be God's will, answered the Pope, Two Swiss guards had to carry her away. Pietro approached the Pope, embraced him and cried. His auditive device fell to the ground. The Pope bent down to fetch the device. Pietro told, 
that he felt as if he had embraced Jesus Christ. Before leaving, Pope Francis waved his hand and said, Don't cry. Everything will be okay. Pietro was born on May 25, 2002, in Monza, in Archdiocese of Milan. Was born and could not breathe. He suffered from fatal pulmonary disease. Expectations were grim. His parents, Al and Waller, both devout Christians, asked Carmelite father Antonio Sangali to baptize the boy in case he died within the next few days. Father Antonio gave them a photograph of Louis and Zélie Martin and advised them to start novena of prayers to Louis and Zélie right now for healing for newborn from God. Pietro entangled in medical equipment with 18 tubes lied like a martyr like a true Lamb of God. All the time, people prayed Novena and Rosary. After several crises, on June 29, on St. Peter's Day, Pietro started to breathe himself. It was a miracle. Medical science could not give to it any explanation. Thirty-three days later, on July 27th, Pietro left the hospital. During his childhood, Pietro used to tell a story. When he was born and his condition was very bad, His parents addressed Teresa's parents, Louis and Zeli, and they in their turn approached Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus, Jesus healed him. Now we see Pietro with his family and Cardinal Martins, who conducted the beatification festivities in Lisieux. But meanwhile, in these days, mid-October 2008, feast days of St. Therese of Avila, Carmen was born in Valencia, Spain. She was born prematurely, only six months after conception. She was born with large widespread hemorrhages in brain and heart. It seemed that prognosis was hopeless and the case is fatal. Girl's father was in despair. He ran to the Carmel sisters asking for the divine interception. What followed was quite similar to the Pietro miracle. Everybody prayed, asking for Louis and Zelie's help. Within several weeks, the girl started to recover. Hemorrhages gradually dissolved. 
Carmen recovered. Now she goes to school. On January 7, 2013, the Archbishop of Valencia opened the miracle process which was completed on October 18, 2015, in Vatican, during the Synod on the Family. For the first time in history, the institution of marriage, the family, family Louis and Zélie Martin was canonized. Now let us return to Lisieux to complete our first film about St. Teresa's family. It is February 2009. Not far from the Lisieux Carmel Monastery, a Lisieux and Zélie Martin spiritual center for the pilgrims is open. The most popular attraction in the town is St. Teresa's Basilica, built in 1937. Several months have passed since the Louis and Zeli festivities, but the reminders are still seen. At present, Basilica takes a rest. Workmen are busy with small repairs. In the crypt of the Basilica, at the altar, Louis and Zelie's reliquary is placed. Upon it, the most important events of their lives are represented. So the parents are received into their daughter's basilica. This film is an homage to the Holy Family of Martin and to the Carmel worldwide. Let the God's blessing and Saint Therese and her holy parents, Louis and Zelie's intercession, guide us on the road to heaven.